What's good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul and I make videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I've been living here for almost 19 years now and today I'm going to be talking to you about the best things about Japanese summer. So let's get right into it. First, I want to make very clear that I'm not going to be talking about generic summer things like, oh, it's great to go to the beach or whatever. No, I'm going to try to keep these things specifically Japanese related. All right, the first obvious place to start is Japanese festivals or matsuri. These can be found all over Japan. There's big famous ones like the Gion Matsuri in Kyoto, but there's a lot of local small festivals or matsuri going on as well. And they are a lot of fun. They are a wonderful slice of Japanese culture. When you visit one, you feel like you're really in Japan and seeing a long-standing Japanese tradition. They tend to revolve around a local shrine. And during this festival, the god or goddess of the shrine actually goes th for a ride through the community in what's called an omikoshi. Usually translated as portable shrine in English, but I had a student the other week translate it as vehicle of God. And I thought, that sounds way cooler than portable shrine, so let's go with that. So the vehicle of God goes through the neighborhood and people follow it and they cheer on the people who are carrying it and it's really heavy. I've had the opportunity to carry those on a couple of occasions and it's a lot of fun. A lot of food, a lot of beer, a lot of basically community togetherness and there's a lot of great food that comes out in the food stalls like yakisoba, okonomiyaki, takoyaki, all these wonderful foods. and. I actually recommend trying to find a local one because you get a more intimate feel basically and I've actually been pulled into a local festival before. I was just walking through a neighborhood that I didn't know and they were like, hey foreigner, come carry the Mikoshi for a little bit and so I hauled the Mikoshi for about 30 meters, they gave me a ice cream bar and I ended up having a really great time. So. Local ones can be a lot of fun. You don't always have to go to the big famous festival. The next sort of festival I have to talk about is fireworks festivals or Hanabi Taikai. Now you might say, well, there's fireworks in a lot of countries around the world, but in Japan, they have a genuine long-standing tradition. In fact, the Sumiragawa fireworks festival is the oldest recorded festival in the world going back to the early 1700s and it's been depicted in all kinds of paintings and woodblock prints where pleasure boats are out on the river and the courtesans are on the shore watching the fireworks festival. It's a huge festival. If you go, it's super crowded. Just be aware of that. But it's a beautiful fireworks display and it's literally centuries old. So that's pretty cool. Now, one way to beat the summer heat in Japan, and it is hot in Japan in summer, is doyo no hi, which is the official best day of the year to eat unagi, or eel. You see, eel is believed to have stamina-inducing properties that allow you to withstand the summer heat. And so eating unagi in summer in general is good, and eating it on doyo no hi is actually especially good. So it'll make you healthy through the summer. And this has a long-standing tradition. It's a tradition that a lot of people don't know, I think. So even if you're in your home country that is hot right now at this time of year, go ahead, go to your local Japanese restaurant and order the eel. You'll be partaking in that tradition wherever you are in the world. Now, another way to beat the heat is something called a hooding. You hang it from your eaves of your house or from your balcony. It's a glass or sometimes metal dome with a little clapper inside and a paper hanging from it, sometimes with an expression or kanji written there. And it rings this beautiful, clear sound in the summertime. And traditionally, it's thought that that sound is so clear and pristine that it helps you to feel cool. So it's kind of like a psychological trick in the summertime in order to feel cool back in the days when there was no air conditioning. Now another old-fashioned way to deal with the heat that's kind of disappearing, and it's kind of sad, is the fan or handheld fan, the sensu. And you still see them at Matsuri festivals, etc. But those little battery-powered hand fans are so popular, and it doesn't matter the generation, elderly or young, everyone's using them. And don't blame them because they are so convenient. But as a result, the handheld fan, which is 
so often the image of Japanese culture has largely disappeared. The next thing I'm going to talk about, I promise I wasn't going to say anything about the beach, but there is one beach tradition that I have to bring up, and that is the bashing of watermelons. Basically, you take a watermelon, you lay it on the sand, you blindfold your friend, you spin them around a bunch of times, and then you send them off towards the watermelon with a big stick in their hands. And their job is to find it and kill it. Now, it's basically a Japanese piñata, except instead of candy coming out, it's delicious watermelon. And it's a lot of fun. It might seem a little bit wasteful, but it's a great tradition in my opinion. Now I'd be very remiss if I didn't mention that it's Mount Fuji climbing season in summer. I think a lot of people have the wrong impression that you can come and climb Mount Fuji almost any time of the year. That's not true. The actual official climbing season is July 1st to July 27th in Yamanashi, or the north slope of Mount Fuji. Shizuoka, their season starts five days later. It's July 5th that they start. But basically that's the official climbing season. And climbing outside of that season means there's less services on the mountain. The huts aren't open. You won't be able to find food and water. You have to pack everything yourself. You can technically climb it, but it becomes more dangerous. Also, I'd be greatly remiss if I didn't mention the most important festival in Japan in the summertime. That is Obon. This is something that's celebrated everywhere, all across the nation. Although each community has its own kind of local traditions that they pay attention to. And Obon is basically when Japanese people travel back to their hometown or ancestral home and they pay respect to their deceased ancestors. There will be cleaning of the gravestones, there will be inviting of a monk from a temple into their home to pray for the deceased, and basically it's a time to pay respects for those who have passed on. I'm not going to get in a lot of detail about the festival right now because I'm actually planning on making an entire video about it, and I'm going to film during Obon to get some of those local traditions from where my wife is from. So if that sounds of interest to you, tune back in in the middle of August because that's about the time I will drop that video. Okay, do you live in Japan? Is summer a season that you enjoy here? Let us know what your favorite part is. If you've never been to Japan, let us know what sounded the best to you from what I talked about. But at any rate, I want to thank you very much for watching this particular video, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.